So I'm ready. Okay, good evening. Call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the July meeting of the Wicomico County Board of Education. As we always do, we begin the meeting with a pledge to the flag and remind you today's meetings being live streamed and videotaped and you can view it at wcboe.org. Please stand and I'll lead us in the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, 3.2, approval of today's agenda. I'll entertain a motion. I move to make a Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 3.3, moment of silence, which it's a good month. We didn't lose any of our colleagues over the last 30 days, so we won't have a moment of silence, which that's a good thing. 3.4, public comments. We have four this evening. The public comment section of the agenda is an opportunity for the superintendent and board to listen to individuals' own comments on topics concerning Wicomico <laughs> County Public Schools. The board chairman has the right to limit public comments in length or those concerning personnel or student matters, which clearly identify an individual or individual, individuals. Appeals or legal matters are to be for the, that are before the board. Negotiations and topics that are more appropriately addressed in closed session or privately with a staff member. Only verbal comments are permitted during public comment session of a board meeting. Written, printed, audio, or video material may be submitted via comments at wcboe.org. No signs or posters may be displayed by the public during board meetings. Each speaker shall address all comments directly to the board and speak only from the designated location for public comments. And as you know, if you've been to many of these meetings, we limit public comment to three minutes for each individual. And I think Andre will put a big clock up there when we're ready to start. So we'll take them in the order that they've been presented to me. Our first speaker is a retired teacher. Her name is Karen Miller. Her issue is CRT in school with a question mark. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. It makes it hard. 
harder for teachers to maintain support from parents in the community and therefore makes their job harder. 30 seconds. I ask Mr. Palmer or the board to respond to my questions in the follow-up session by explaining where it exists since it's not part of our curriculum, clarifying what he meant or retracting his statement. To do any less is to do a disservice to our teachers and our students. Mr. Palmer, you are fond of saying that you are an instructor in the Naval Academy. Well, I'm the wife of a Marine, so I expect more integrity from you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Bishop Marcus Riddell, issue is threat made on blacks by student. Good evening, board. Good evening. Uh, last time I spoke on this issue, um, I was told that this issue was under investigation and I have seen no results whatsoever of an investigation. Um, still very disturbed that I have actually seen nothing take place other than statements from Mike Lewis. Um, I'd like to read uh, a couple of things. Uh, Twelve-year-old arrested in connection to Wicomico Middle School bomb threat. The Wicomico County Sheriff's Office says the 12-year-old female has been arrested in connection to the bomb threat that was called into Wicomico Middle School Thursday morning. Shortly before 9 a.m. Thursday, a call was placed directly to the administrative office at the school by an unknown subject stating that a bomb had been placed on school property. That its detonation was imminent. Administration immediately began evacuating the building while the fire department and local law enforcement resources responded to investigate the premises for any possible explosive device. The school was declared safe for re-entry approximately four hours later. Further investigation led deputies to identify the subject as a 12-year-old student who reportedly made the call from a nearby off-campus location that allowed her to watch the response of her phone call. Police say she was taken into custody and is currently being detained in the Lower Eastern Shore Children's Center pending further adjudication. She is charged with threat of mass violence, threat to explode destructive device, and disturbing school operations. But when I read from the WMDT report of, and I'm not using the young man's name, that made a statement to let's have some fun and shoot some niggers was not arrested or removed and I still don't know that anything other than Mike Lewis's so-called threat assessment 30 seconds was done so as I said before it looks like we're just giving time for things to cool off and then everybody's going to forget about it but I'm not going to forget about it you didn't threaten students he said let's shoot some niggers Nothing's been done, and the board should have acted immediately. Thank you. Next speaker is Eileen Johnson. Issue is accountability on racist video. Is there a time? Oh, just that call. Hi, thank you. Um, I come to the board once again today as a mom to two children in Wakamaka County Public Schools. My son just graduated, um, my son just finished third grade and my daughter just graduated kindergarten. Our experience has been that they've been loving, lovingly shepherded by educators and support staff. Your job as representatives like educators is to shepherd our children, most importantly to safety. 
Many times you will hear board representatives and school leaders say that their most solemn duty is safety. So it's from that concern that I ask for a full accounting of the racial terror video from Ms. Lewis. I believe the statement from President Malone and former Superintendent Hanlon was a very good statement that fully acknowledged the gravity and reality of that video and its repercussions and distrust, pain, and reopening of wounds that viewing it brought to people. Mr. Malone and Dr. Hanlon both named the th bigotry and threats of violence in that video. That's an important first step because there are some, namely Ms. Lewis, who somehow overlooked the step of simply recognizing reality. They want us to assume that we know, that they know, that racism and bigotry are wrong. But in reality, how in the world could we ever assume that? When fa uh, families fa fail to teach their children what racism is and how to counter it, that's where schools can fill in the gap. We need um, reassurance from the school system that you are working to counter those racist attitudes, from seemingly benign comments to outright racial terror threats, and we must be vigilant in this. I had a 30-minute phone call with Ms. Lewis, um, and I, I'm trying to talk as fast as I can. Um, I realized that the reality of this video and its effect, especially on parents to black children, has not begun to pierce her worldview. Ms. Lewis is a mother who, like most of us parents, would walk through raging fire to save our children and who is wholly consumed by her child's pain. As a mom, I can understand that fully, and I desperately hope that Ms. Lewis could begin to take a step outside the world she's currently in and into the shoes of those black parents who viewed that video to feel the smallest bit of their pain and tiredness. It's my understanding that black folks are tired of showing up to meetings and asking for you to protect their children, asking for representatives to simply acknowledge reality. I asked Ms. Lewis why in God's name she could not nearly one month later simply acknowledge that this thing seconds. happened and this thing caused pain. She shared with me that the news stations had covered it, so why would she need to? This is not a moment for her to, to simply say hashtag teenagers. It's more of a moment where she needs to step into that pain. I give her the example of when my child's on a playground and he gets into a fight with someone else, we talk about what happened, my, I, my son apologizes, and then I don't take my son after he's gotten into an argument, I don't take him and Time. bring him into the house and slam the door and not talk about it again. Um, so we need to recognize reality and we also need reassurance that um, the guns have been removed from the premises. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Final speaker is uh, Mr. Kevin Lindsay. S issue is school safety. Good evening, board. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Stauffer, um, on being the new superintendent. But I'm going to personally tell you, I was rooting for my friend, Mr. Briggs, over there. <laughs> um, um, hello, Miss Lewis. Um, you probably know who I am. And uh, first of all, I want to apologize for uh, tagging you on your personal page. And I went to your your uh, your page, which you're running for election. And I, and I just want to say a couple of things face to face. Um, I just feel as raising two African American children in your district that I, I, I still do not feel comfortable with you making any decisions for my kids or any other kid. Um, you have stated that you're to continue to run and that's your right and it's my right to vote for whoever I want to vote for. Was very impressed with you on June 3rd. Very impressed at the forum. What I'm not impressed with is the previous speaker stated that there is no statement and if there is one, I'm sorry, but I believe there should have been one on your personal campaign page. And if the rumor is true that other, other African Americans say that word, so it's okay, that is not your place or anybody that doesn't look like me's place to make that decision. My wife's family nickname is Precious. If any of you guys called her Precious, I'm going to be upset. And I know we live in a world where people don't look like me, can just walk around freely, say what they want, and don't even think about the repercussions. But this is serious. Saying the word, I'm not going to say it, and actually holding a fake 
whatever they want to call it, I'm not happy with it. Your silence is a statement to me. One month, I haven't heard anything. A simple, look, I can't talk about it. I apologize. This is wrong. We're working and we're moving forward would have been enough. But the fact that I haven't heard anything from you as my representative is really concerning. My daughter's concerned. She goes to school at Parkside. My son is concerned. And don't think these kids don't know what's going on. 30 seconds. Thank you. That is the issue. I really think we are doubting our children, our students' ability to process everything that's going on. And the lack of accountability and leadership from every official locally that would, can't say anything because it's election time, it, it's, just, it's just disheartening. So I appreciate everything you guys do. Dr. Malone soccer, he referees my soccer, son's soccer game. I appreciate that. I, pre I know it's a tough job. But thank you, and thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, sir. Okay, that concludes uh, public comments. As always, we take all these comments seriously. We all take notes, take them under advisement, post answers to questions on our website, which we began, I think, in January or February, and we'll continue that practice. So 3.4, superintendent's report. Before I turn it over to our superintendent, it's appropriate to say welcome to your very first board meeting, Dr. Stolfer. He's been on the job now officially 12 days. Um, so this will be his first evening with the board to do his superintendent's report. So we want to say welcome, glad to have you, and turn the meeting over to you now, Dr. Stauffer. Thank you, Mr. Malone. I want to thank um, all the board members and all of those around the community that have supported me as I have entered this new role. I would also be remiss if I did not acknowledge the great team that I work with each and every day. Those around this room, my senior leadership team, Dr. Briggs, Mrs. Miles, all of our directors uh, in each of the areas, and really the entire staff around our school system. It is truly a team effort, and I'm just very humbled and honored to be a part of that. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Malone and the board for your confidence as we move forward. I will say that uh, getting started on July 1st, I was very excited to do so. Talked with uh, our senior leadership team with Mrs. Miles and Dr. Briggs and we wanted to reach out to all of uh, the new administrators uh, and administrators in new positions around our schools. So we did that. I was able to uh, visit each of the five new principals and the schools that they are now taking over uh, in that leadership role on that first day. I know that uh, other members of senior leadership made visits and uh, a number of phone calls to new administrators as well. And we were also able to welcome staff and new staff, especially at central office as well as out of the school. So since that time, we've been busy uh, doing a number of various community meetings, trying to be as visible as possible. Uh, my goal is to engage as many members of the community uh, as I can. I was blessed to be able to speak with the Greater Salisbury Committee at their luncheon yesterday. Uh, we'll be speaking uh, again tomorrow uh, with our own facilities department. We had an exciting conference today for all of our supervisors, directors, administrators, principals, assistant principals around the school system at Salisbury University. Uh, and it was a tremendous leadership event uh, for each of them. And that was an honor to be able to speak with them this morning as well. And, and we had a great motivational speaker this afternoon. So we've been uh, doing, a, I think, a good job of getting out into the community. But my goal uh, over the next four months is to do just that, to make as many connections as I can, learn as much uh, from our community members as possible, and uh, bring that back to uh, the work that we do around our school system. I would encourage everyone to visit our website and take a look at the superintendent entry plan and read through that. Uh, it talks a little bit about the things that I just mentioned. It talks about the foundation that we currently have, our vision and our mission within Wicomico County Public Schools. It talks about my thoughts regarding principal leadership and how we are all leaders in our community. We all influence others and the importance of the work that we do and the importance that 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 work must be principled 
in just that. So I think we all need to think about what influence we do have and the leadership values that we want to instill in others and that others see through us. That's uh, very important to me and that's a guiding force in the work that I see all of us as a community uh, working together moving forward and engaging in that planning process uh, which would be the last stage of that entry plan as we move forward with uh, the blueprint for Maryland's future and the strategic plan that we have to do not only at the state level but here locally as well. So it's been an exciting 12 days uh, and I have uh, really enjoyed it and uh, if you haven't seen me yet please continue to look because my goal is to be as visible as possible as we move forward. Just some very quick stats on our summer programs. We have eight different types of summer, uh, summer programs happening right now in Wacomico County Public Schools. Uh, these programs are occurring in nine of our schools across all corners of the county. Currently it is involving 1,243 students uh, in these summer programs. Topics include academic enrichment, STEM, financial literacy, and business, creative writing, and musical theater. So uh, I would applaud all of our staff that are involved in coordinating those programs. Also want to thank uh, Dr. Briggs and Mr. Brady, Dr. Jones, Laura Jones, and many others that are involved in planning and coordinating these opportunities around our school system. And they are tremendous uh, opportunities for our students and something that I think our students benefit from each and every summer. But this summer is, I think, uh, bigger, bigger and better than ever. So uh, I'm proud of that. And since filling uh, the role of superintendent, it has left a vacancy in the role of the chief finance and operations officer. So I am excited to say that uh, the last few weeks that we uh, have posted this position, we had a number of qualified applicants uh, but internally within our system as well as some that applied externally. Uh, we were able to conduct interviews through our senior leadership team and all of the directors uh, among the, the division of business and operations that were a part of that. Uh, we had uh, the depth of leadership that we have in this county is truly tremendous and it was uh, something that I already knew but really something that uh, hit home with all of us as we conducted those interviews and uh, we were able to talk with a top candidate uh, yesterday and finalized our decision so it is my pleasure to announce the new Chief Finance and Operations Officer for Wicomico County Public Schools Dr. Brian Rager. So I'm asking him to come forward if he will. can take his new seat over <laughs> there on the side. By next meeting, we'll have we a nameplate for have you. have a new, new nameplate <laughs> for sure. I heard you. <laughs> so with that, that can, and concludes uh, my report. part. And then I will ask for Dr. Briggs to do the, the grants report. Thank you, Dr. Stolfer. I'm pleased to be able to share some brief information from our June grants report. This past month, we received funding for seven grants, totaling almost $8 million. As I shared during the June board meeting, we received over $7 million from MSDE as part of the Maryland Leeds Grant Opportunity. The majority of this funding will enable us to provide a retention and recruitment incentive of $2,500 for all full-time employees this coming school year. Also from MSDE, we received Judy Center grants for Beaver Run and Pemberton to assist in ensuring our students are entering school ready to learn. Additional grants received included funds from the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance, the Foundation, for Impact on Literacy and Learning and the Music Teachers National Association Foundation. Also, we submitted applications for another seven grants and I look forward to updating everyone on their status at an upcoming board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Okay. Mr. Malone. Thank you. Your first report of many, I hope, right? Well. <laughs> Thank you. So 4.1, approval of open session minutes from our June 23rd meeting. If you've had time to review them, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Is there a second? 
Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Abstain. Mrs. Lewis wasn't at the last meeting. That's appropriate. Do you have that? Okay. It's carried. Uh, next section, consent items, 5.1 to 5.7. So 5.8, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, is there a motion to approve the consent items? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I oppose the 5.6. 5.6. I approve of the rest. You have that? Okay. All right, it's carried. 6.1. Since the 2000-2001 school year, WCPS has partnered with the Salisbury Neighborhood Housing Service to have single-family homes constructed on-site at our Career and Technology Center. The proposed contract would extend this partnership into the 2022-23 school year and lead to the 13th home produced by students in our CTE program. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, is there a motion to approve the contract with the Salisbury Neighborhood Housing Service? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I'll turn it over to the Bryans, Ashby <laughs> and Rager. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ashby. We didn't build for uh, several years uh, when things were pretty lean. We re -res resurrected the program and our last home uh, was constructed in 2019. During COVID, this project was impossible. Uh, it was impossible to build a ho home virtually. We talked a lot about it, but we didn't get any construction done. And the students of the Parkside Career and Technology Center under the direction of their instructors um, and that includes the carpentry program, our electrical program, our HVAC program, and our masonry program, complete the construction of this home. We begin on the home uh, in September when the students return. We're able to finish construction by June. The home is moved in June to a lot within the city of Salisbury for final placement. And over the past 12 homes, we've involved approximately 450 students. Um, it is a wonderful project, not only for the practical application of what they're learning in the classrooms and labs, but the students also take great pride in being able to place a home in their community. Uh, and this has been a wonderful partnership. Um, it's something that means a lot to our CTE facility, and I would ask that you give this uh, consideration um, and approve this project. Uh, so that our students can uh, once again build a home to put back into our community. And we'll stand for any questions. Okay. I can honestly say I fully support this. We were asked so many times in 2021 as we went back to school, <laughs> when are we going to build a house? And it's, it's expanding this program and expand anything we can do to expand CTE is wonderful. That's uh, my comments. I remember reading about this project before I came on the board. And I've been wondering, you know, why we had not heard of it. And thank you, Mr. Ashby, for all that you do, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Ryan, do you remember uh, approximately how many houses have been built? Because I know we did it prior to 2008. Before it From my count, this, we've completed 12 with Salisbury Neighborhood Housing. This is our 30 or 31st home wow. um, in CT. Prior to the relationship with Salisbury Neighborhood Housing, um, we advertised the home and built it, built for a family yeah. in the community. Um, and the relationship was, and that was wonderful. Uh, we actually built a larger home at that time, but the relationship with Salisbury Neighborhood Housing from the point of financing um, and ease of construction has really helped to streamline things. So we're hoping to use a, a community partner. Mr. Ashby, thank you so much for your perseverance on getting these 
um, this project up and going. I know that it's definitely something we have heard about in the community when it was going to start up. So thank you for making this happen. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. I assume you're ready to vote on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Uh -huh. 6.2 personnel matters is for information only. So 7.1 board members reports. Last time I started to my left, so this time I'll start with my right with Mr. Palmer. During the last month, I've been actively involved in our uh, election process. And I mean really active in our election process. And uh, there's no doubt that my attention to emails from all over have been uh, not where they should be. But I guarantee you, I do answer them. I will go back to look at the ones that I've been said to miss. And I guarantee you, I will have responses. And I still ask all parents to come to these meetings to express their opinions about what they think is wrong, and what they think is right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. <laughs> What's that? Just gonna see if we can get it working. Oh, okay. <laughs> when we call, I can come back to you. I'll go to Ms. Suthowski. I attended the county council meeting on Tuesday, July the 5th, where our student athletes were acknowledged for winning state championships in track and field. People who know me know that I like to go around the community and I talk to people. And while talking to people in the community, and listening to their comments, I have compiled a list of suggestions given to me that I would like to share. And I have also submitted these in writing to Dr. Stauffer. Number one, parents and especially grandparents would like to have the reinstatement of American Education Week. Number two, the reinstatement of the superintendent's open doors meeting each month. <coughs> Three, and I like this one because I had never ever thought of this, that members of the school board have meet and greets in various parts of the county quarterly, not official meetings, but maybe have a Sunday afternoon meet and greet at Allen Community Hall, or go over to a uh, Mardella are different places in the county so that people out in the county, they may know their board representative, but they would not know those of us who represent other parts of the county. Fourth suggestion, to encourage our schools to reinstate PTAs and also chapter one parent and student nights. I know I have attended a fabulous paint night at Glen Avenue School. I attended <coughs> parent and uh, student nights at both Fruitland Intermediate and at Prince Street School. And people would like to have these reinstated. Another concern was curriculum transparency. And parents would like to have posted <coughs> on the individual school websites what is being taught in each classroom and parents want to know more about the social and emotional curriculum that is mandated by the state of Maryland. But I'm going to ask parents and concerned citizens to please continue to contact me and other members of the board with your concerns. I will address these and you know that I do. I almost immediately uh, return all phone calls and emails and I will pass them on to Dr. Stauffer. Thank you. Thank you. Go back to Mr. Fitzgerald, you wanna go around? Before I go to Mr. Brown, uh, Vice Chairman Murray, Mr. Michael Murray is not with us obviously. He is in 
Nebraska and another state, and <laughs> probably nearby, but geography wasn't my best subject. It's in the continental U.S., though, I'm sure. He is uh, president of the uh, car, uh, some car Pontiac. So Pontiac. Pontiac Cars. Car Association. And he's presenting scholarships to deserving students, not only from this country, but from other countries. So I wanted to make note of that. He didn't just uh, decide to, to not come to the meeting. He's doing a very, very important thing, presenting scholarships to very deserving students. So, And he decided to do it by driving there. So he had to leave today to get there by tomorrow and Thursday. So thank you. Mr. Brown. Okay. Uh, as I'm riding around the county, I'm pleased to see uh, a couple projects going on in some of our schools. Uh, the grounds really look good uh, so far. But I'm pleased to see that we're finally going to get some new windows in Chipman Elementary School. I've had mm -hmm. a number of parents who have been concerned about that for some time now. And they're renovating it and <coughs> putting in new doors and windows th throughout. Uh, also, I was by Park Pinehurst Elementary School and I saw some trailers there. Mm -hmm. So I know that something's happening at Pinehurst Over Elementary there. School. Uh, and I'm certain that uh, everybody's looking forward to opening up Beaver Run uh, this coming year. We all had an opportunity to visit it about a, what, a month ago, mm -hmm. and things look terrific. It's uh, going to be the state of the art, and I'm certain that the students, staff, and parents are going to be very proud of Beaver Run Elementary School. And uh, we're moving forward with Mardella. Also, uh, I'm pleased to see school buses running again. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that means that we have uh, summer school programs, and as uh, Dr. Stauffer just mentioned, we have programs going on in about nine different schools with over 1,000 kids in those schools with various kind of enrichment programs, and some of them even for um, original credit, as some students want to get ahead. Uh, the other thing that uh, really concerns me, that I miss most of all, is there are no student representatives in this meeting. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them come September. It's amazing to me, you know, we got four high schools pretty much close together, but there are always different things going on, different exciting things in each one of the schools, even though we are in a, a close proximity. And finally, to uh, Dr. Stauffer and the staff here at um, the central office, as well as the entire school system and the board, we look forward to working with you, and we're certain that we will have an enjoyable and rewarding year. I know that there are going to be challenges, but we're going to have to meet those challenges and just buckle down and do what's fair, do what's firm, uh, be flexible, and when things go wrong, and they will, there will be some things that go south, and we'll just have to band together and fix them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Laird Lewis. Right. Hello. It has uh, definitely been a very busy end of the school year and start to the summer. Um, I first would like to extend congratulations again to Dr. Schaffer in his uh, new position as superintendent and Dr. Rager um, for his um, advancement. Um, I actually had the opportunity to teach under Dr. Rager, and I will say it was a uh, wonderful experience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you um, um, in this degree. So congratulations on that. Um, there are lots of things going on in our county right now. I know that there is a countywide um, reading incentive. Um, I will say that I am uh, three books in so far, so I'm participating in that uh, uh, reading challenge um, as well. I know that there are some reading challenges that are going on per school, and I see a lot of teachers who are posting what they're reading wherever they um, are reading at, and then they're doing small reviews and hashtags and, and things of sorts. So that's wonderful to see. Um, so I am doing that. I'm also um, still working with my reading therapy dog. I have an English bulldog. So we did a lot of visiting at the end of the school year, taking her around just to um, read to students at the end of the school year and, and think about um, getting prepared for summer and moving on to the next grade and um, some wonderful books that I received from the media specialists. Um, I have been to many of the same community events that the other board members have, so I'm not going to um, bore you by, by listing all of those. Um, I will say we did have a wonderful send-off for uh, Dr. Hanlon um, in the beginning for her retirement. Um, MABE has a lot of seminars and webinars that are available this summer, so I've done some research and looked into those, that um, ones that I will be taking advantage of. Um, and let's see. Um, I did attend um, a county council meeting 
I was not in attendance to the board meeting last month. I apologize for that. Um, as many people know, my daughter is in High School Rodeo Association, um, and we do a, a lot of traveling. So I was not able to be at the board meeting. I was with her and um, our horse, Ruby. Um, but I did attend the county council meeting where one of our youngest members um, was given a proclamation. Um, Allie Gray, she attends North Salisbury, and she was given a proclamation for being Miss Little Princess for the Maryland High School Rodeo Association, um, which was a uh, wonderful thing for her. She is in the fourth grade, so she was definitely excited. Um, and we were also there. Miss Ann was there. We recognized a lot of athletes. Um, who had gone above and beyond in their academics as well as their athletics. Um, and I did have some additional words to state tonight, but as having a um, conversation with um, Mr. Craig, who is the board's legal counsel, um, it was deemed that this was not the place to um, read that statement or go into that. Um, the board members up here, we are a seven member entity. Um, we work together, we decide together, we collaborate together, um, and we did decide that this was not the appropriate setting um, for me to give a personal statement of the events that have occurred within um, the past 30 days. I will tell you that there has been contact, and again, there will be a statement that will be made. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Is that going to work? <laughs> so, um, so my board report. Um, it, the okay. sc school fiscal year begins July 1st and runs to June 30. So it's 2022-2023, and it puts me in mind of uh, New Year's Day for the rest of the world is January 1st for the school system New Year's Day is July 1st and so this year we began the new year the new school year with a new leader and now we have another new uh, team member on the executive level with Dr. Rager so I would say at this point in time uh, I don't make New Year's resolutions but I would say that we should all be resolved at beginning at July 1st to to move this ship forward. I mean, public education is important, as everyone knows, and as Mr. Brown pointed out, things do go wrong and we try to fix them. Um, public education isn't perfect, but it's still pretty pretty good in Wicomico County, and I'm very, very happy with the performance of the public schools, but we can always get better. And so with Dr. Stauffer in the lead and the administrative staff and all the wonderful teachers and staff members we have, the new hires we're making, um, Look forward to a great school year, and over the next 30 days before we meet again, I'm sure there'll be a lot of activity to prepare for the new school year, and we're all looking very much forward to that. As I travel around the county, as Mr. Lindsay pointed out, I uh, referee youth soccer. I see a lot of youth playing soccer, and at Crown, there's a high school league, and it's probably the largest high school league I've seen in the three or four summers I've been doing it, which is a very good sign. We have all the people back playing soccer, and they're all out there uh, participating, and uh, it's great to see. And we're all ho hoping, and I think it will come to pass, if we come back to school after the day after Labor Day this year with no masks and no virtual, unless you do that by choice, it'll be the first time since, what, 2019, 2020, 2019 school we began that year. So here's hoping that continues, and with that, no Let, quotes? No quotes tonight. I'll save them up for August. <laughs> With that, we're adjourned. Thank you for attending, all of you. <laughs>